I describe this place as being kind of timeless. Um, it's like you can come back here and if you didn't know what year this was, you might have a hard time guessing. I used to paint kind of as a hobby, but my painting started getting a lot better when I started hanging out here and painting. So in a typical year, Oxbow has its bread and butter in the summer, and we offer a full, full roster of, you know, upwards of 50 classes that can be taken for college credit or not. We have specialty studios in metals, in ceramics, in glass, and in print. Um, we also have, you know, a rich history and also present of painting classes happening here. We also have visiting artists during the summer. So every week a different visiting artist comes to work with folks on campus. They're not here in a traditional teaching capacity, but they do an artist lecture and other programming that people on campus can engage with. I think Oxbow or it has lived a very long time as a very organic, loose organization, where other places like it may have already failed, you know, decades, generations ago. It's tenacious and it's, you know, it's tenacious about its style and it has, you know, managed to sustain itself. So, so some part of me feels like it's delivered on something over and over again to a point where people who know about it, it's like, it's like the art world's best kept secret or something, like people who kind of are in the know and know about it. They all say magical, which is fascinating to me. Everyone says, oh, it's magical. Like people who came here 10 years ago that I meet are like, oh, it's so magical. They're like, okay, it's magical. But there does seem to be a kind of word of mouth about Oxbow that maintains that. Whether people are here for literally two weeks for an artist residency or a class, or here for you know 25 years, as some of our staff have been, um, it is a place that really leaves a mark on people that people return to, whether physically or just you know in their minds. Really wonderful people are drawn here. You know, I think there is like a, a truth to some places and some communities have this energy and this frisson that just like attracts people um, who want to care and want to be involved. A thing that I often say is like, if, if, you, if you're not interested in community, if you're not invested in actively being involved in a creative, caring community, this is not the place for you. It's not the place for an artist who's interested in just being in their studio, um, advancing their own career in a very, you know, solo kind of auteur, stereotypical way. This is a place for people who really care about exchange. Having this very cross-generational group of people living and working together for an intense period of time is just, it's generous and it's challenging. And I think that's the thing that, that shakes things loose for people. It's some place, it's like a place where people can, I think, be very vulnerable, but it feels safe to be very vulnerable. Seeing everybody here be so accepting of each other, it's like, why can't I do that for myself? If I told people here who've only known me for a few months things I think about myself sometimes, then they'd be like, you're insane. Don't say that about my friend Lucy. So seeing that kind of self-acceptance and self-care modeled by other people here has been really influential. The history about Oxbow that hits me the most is our, these like costume parties. I'm sure people have talked to you about the parties that we have on Friday nights. We love dancing, having big dance parties is always a priority as often as we can. It feels very summer camp, but we all like really respect each other as professionals and experts. Like we can be as silly and weird as we want to be, but at the end of the day, there's like so many people here who are like technically like so good at their jobs and also know how to be a, a total clown. So <laughs> that's like a big part of the spirit. It's just master clown. I think the, the 
dining situation, meal times are the heart of Oxbow because it's what brings everyone together. It's scheduled three times a day. You know it's going to be there, and it's a chance for you to like um, break out of that classroom setting and talk face to face. Sharing a meal is a very intimate experience, and it's a very magical experience. And like being able to share a meal, like with say a visiting artist who's here, who's like maybe someone that you admire um, from your art classes. You can literally like sit down and have a meal with them. Like where else in the world can you do that with your idols? Such as like Claus Oldenburg washed dishes here at one point, which I find super rad. Um, and like Jim Henson spent time here. I love the way that feeding everybody together builds community. It brings people together in a way that breaks down hierarchies. I find it really um, exciting to be the sustenance behind all of this like revolutionary art making and like all these radical thoughts that are happening here. In most educational settings, you're not sharing meals with your teachers and you're not drinking a beer at the fire with your teachers. And here you get to really, um, it kind of breaks down the hierarchy of student teacher relationships and um, that can be a very powerful and transformative experience. The academic institutional environment can be so performative you know, but at Oxbow, there's more space where people can be, can kind of, you know, remove that a bit more, sometimes literally, and can engage in more of a fuller spectrum. But coming here as faculty was really a really positive experience for me. It felt like a place you could really break, you know, with tradition, or you could sort of try out radical different things and have a, a much more holistic, cohesive classroom teaching, mentoring experience. And it, it really was a, an amazing experience for me as a teacher. I really see it as a pretty exceptional environment to get an education. I think all of the things about Oxbow that people love, that it's this like beautiful community or it's this kind of social aspect to it that they value. I can appreciate that that's what they value and I think that's amazing, but to me it's it's that it's such a phenomenal learning environment. It's so intergenerational and it's it just allows for a kind of risk taking and mess making that a school, a, a regular program wouldn't provide. This place offers a lot of room for experimentation. I mean, I remember students like from a painting class actually like taking a canoe out into the lagoon, having sort of rigged up like a, <clears throat> a wooden oil painting box situation that had like a flotation device in the bottom, diving into the water, and then working on a painting, like a watercolor, like dipping her paintbrush in the lagoon and then painting on the... I just feel like those sort of things, this place sort of like asks you to kind of think outside the box and do crazy stuff. I run the metal shop, but it's very, it's a very flexible space. So it can turn into like a wood, more of a wood shop. It can be a space for like more performance based classes or research based classes. It's like a whole variety of all the way up to like hardcore blacksmithing and foundry with like pouring iron and things that are maybe a little closer to my wheelhouse. So I'm used to being in a metal shop that is just a metal shop, but this place, like almost everything is on wheels and it, it changes constantly and I have to change too. And, and also the metal shop is almost entirely outdoors. And I think sometimes as much as I explain that to faculty ahead of time, sometimes people still show up and are very surprised <laughs> that we're like susceptible to all the elements up there. It's great on like beautiful days, but Sometimes it rains for a whole week and you have to be really flexible. <laughs> I think the thing that I didn't even know was possible till I was here was that kind of the joy in innovating constantly because you're constantly getting feedback as opposed to having this very tight three hours of a class. Everyone goes home, gets on with their life, everything changes. But, but being in it sort of constantly on a day-to-day -day basis it allowed for this really responsive, flexible way of teaching. Just like, yeah, let's do it like this. I could change it. Let's go. Let's go pick up these things. Let's go dumpster diving for cardboard right now because that's what we need. But I think that kind of like responsiveness was exciting, honestly. And I don't know. I mean, the things that the students that I worked with made and the conclusions that they came to or the paths that they went down or the and then the kind of things that I would hear from them afterwards about how that had been like 
the best class, the best experience of their life, the best class they'd ever taken, years later saying that this class completely changed their life or they apply things they learned in that class to, you know, radically different parts of their life. Like, that blows my mind. That is something that I, I guess I, I feel like is really possible when you have this sort of all-in 24-7 teaching and learning experience that you would never get in a regular classroom. In order to, to want to take the kind of risks necessary for creative output, you, you have, there has to be like a certain level of like sa safety around you, you know, like a hierarchy of needs style, like you, you have to be fed, like we feed people really well here, you have space. Uh, like, yeah, the community element is just like a sounding board of folks who you know will like give you honest feedback where you can't and you can fail and like I'm not gonna lose my job here if I make bad art <laughs> and I'm not gonna lose my friends either. It's like you can if you have that that space to fail then you also have space to like surprise yourself. We are family really. I We kind of just want to have this sort of bubble in the woods be the way we wish the rest of the world could be, I think. It is a place that will shift your thinking and shift your work in ways that are really um, exciting and beneficial. You know, it'll lead to, it'll lead to growth somewhere in your life, personal, personally or in the studio. And I think that's the best I can say because it seems like it's different for different people what that is, you know? But consistently, that's what people say. So, you know, it's also just gorgeous and it's, <laughs> it's a wonderful place to sort of be in the summer. It's a beautiful environment. It's, it's rich with history. We feed people incredibly good meals. You know, they, I mean, all of those things are true, but there's a force that happens in this living in a small, intimate community as a learning environment that'll just like, it'll challenge you in really positive ways.